This is Katrin with Disability Rights New York. Welcome to our podcast, Empire State of Rights, closed captioned. We are here to bring you information on the most relevant topics regarding disability rights and advocacy. As New York State continues to address the coronavirus pandemic, Disability Rights New York will be recording podcasts specifically targeted at bringing you up-to-date information and resources. And we will do our best to get you information as it changes. If there is a topic that you would like us to address, please comment below or email us at podcast at drny.org. Today, we welcome DRNY staff attorney, Allison Lynch. She's here to discuss the rights of people with disabilities during the COVID-19 pandemic. Allison, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. So, Allison, obviously our news feeds, whether it's social media or on our television sets, are being inundated with news about COVID-19. There are so many things that our offices specifically need to address during this time. And there are so many questions that people with disabilities have about their rights right now. Allison, during this pandemic, what should people with disabilities be aware of? I think that the most important thing that people need to know right off the bat is that they still have rights under federal, state, and local laws, and they are still eligible for protections based on disability and based on those laws. So as scary as this pandemic is, and with all the major upheaval happening in our lives, that still doesn't give anyone the right to violate protections in place for people with disabilities. And we want to make this really clear because people with disabilities may be more vulnerable to the impacts of COVID-19. Um, you know, we've identified people who are living in nursing homes, adult homes, homeless shelters, and other types of congregate housing where people are maybe sharing spaces more frequently, sharing bedrooms with other people they're naturally going to have a harder time keeping themselves isolated and potentially a harder time avoiding contact with others who may be contagious. So there are kind of extra precautions in place to ensure everybody's safety in those types of settings, even beyond the the basic protections that we've always had through these federal, state, and local laws against discrimination. Uh, people in school who have the right to special education services or accommodations, they may potentially struggle a bit more as these schools adapt to distance learning. But again, this still doesn't mean that there are not protections in place and there are rights. So, you know, what we are hoping to accomplish here is give everyone the awareness and information about the fact that um, you still have these rights, and we are still ready and able to help you mitigate some impacts you feel from what's happening with the virus. And so people's rights may be taken advantage of during a time like this. And as you just brought up, we're, we're talking about people who are not just living in individual residences, but they're also living in settings or some type of group facility. And within those systems, there are going to be, whether it's directives or information um, and rules that are going to be put in place that will affect everyone in the state. Can you tell us now how federal, state, and local laws are protecting individuals specifically with disabilities as these new directives are being brought out every day? Absolutely. So the first kind of baseline is that it's really important to remember that the federal, state, and local laws that we always discuss that protect against discrimination in facilities, employment, education, and in the community at large are still in place, right? So that means that mandates like equal access and laws that protect against discrimination can still be enforced even with these kind of ever-changing circumstances due to COVID-19. Um, and then in addition, agencies at all of these levels are still operational and they're still committed to making sure that individual rights are not violated, whether it has to do with COVID-19 related issue or whether it's a non-COVID-19 related issue that's been maybe ongoing since before the pandemic. These are all issues that are still able to be addressed under the laws that we've always had in place against discrimination. 
in addition, what we're seeing as we continue to move through this pandemic is that agencies at all of these levels, federal, state, and local, are enacting guidances and are in the process of passing legislation that is helping us to redirect our focus in terms of how we can help individuals who may be more vulnerable to the impacts of COVID-19, generally people with disabilities who may experience different types of discrimination or different types of rights violations based on what's happening with the pandemic. So we're learning new laws and regulations every day that are put in place to aid in these protections. So what DRNY is trying to do is keep as up to date as possible so that if you do call in with a question or a concern, we're able to very quickly identify what the problem is and you know what potentially new type of guidance or regulation might um, be something that, that we can use to assist you for that. And we're seeing lots of different changes that are coming in with services that are being provided. Obviously, there's going to be a change in systems that people are generally used to dealing with. There's there's no in-person or services may be, be handled a different way right now where the, the norm that someone might be used to in the way they're getting services or resources has changed and has probably changed more than once and probably will change again. How is DRNY assisting people with disabilities during this time with all of these changes as they're happening so quickly? So first and foremost, I think one of the the best resources that we've started to use in terms of assistance is our website. Um, And that's constantly being updated with helpful resources for New Yorkers all over the state who may be affected by COVID-19. We are putting basically every legitimate resource we can find that that might assist people in all different communities up there for review. So if you go to the website and you have a question about something, give that a scan first and see if there's anything there that can address the, the question or concerns you have. But in addition to that, we're still fully staffed. Um, we're also working on how we can respond now to calls that otherwise might have involved an in-person component. So when ordinarily we might have wanted to meet with you at your facility or go over paperwork with you in person because of COVID-19, that's just not possible right now. So our whole staff is working remotely and that still includes our amazing intake unit. Uh, They're still available to take your calls and direct you to the person at DRNY who can best assist you. So you're still more than able to call in and discuss your issues just as you would have done before this pandemic started. We're also making sure that our staff is staying up to date on what's happening around the state in terms of what all of our partner organizations are doing. So we are able to provide the most relevant and helpful referrals if it's not something that DRNY can handle. We're also trying to stay up to date with new legislation and new regulations and generally how the widespread effects of COVID-19 are impacting the communities that we would ordinarily service. So I know one of the things that our audience is going to be interested in knowing from us There's definitely a lot of questions that are happening out there uh, across the entire state. And the question I would think people would want to know is, when is it really time to contact people at DRNY? What are the specific instances that we'll be able to help with? Or is there general information that they can get from us that they can call whenever they feel like they need to have a question answered? Yeah, absolutely. And it's something that we've talked about here a lot in terms of how best to get this information out to people, how to make sure that we're not missing anyone in the community who's affected. So, you know, at this point, what we're telling people is we want to make it really clear that we're ready to help with issues related to COVID-19. So you should feel free to contact DRNY really at any time during the pandemic if you have questions about your legal rights, what those rights are. Uh, whether or not they're enforceable, or if you want to speak to an attorney about questions you might have concerning those rights, you should call us if you believe you're experiencing any type of disability-related discrimination that's related to COVID-19. So that might be 
different types of discrimination than you've spoken to us about in the past. But if it relates directly to the pandemic, it's something we feel like it's really important for us to hear and to learn about. And you should also feel free to contact us if you're having trouble accessing information about COVID-19 in an accessible format. So there's a lot of press conferences, a lot of statements that are being put out. If those are inaccessible in any way, that's something we would also want to know about. And that's a really important point as we have so much information coming from the outside in is how is that information accessible? So I think that's a really great point to make for our audience. And you've talked about calling the office, but are there other ways for our audience to contact us? Are there other ways that they can get a hold of us? Absolutely. So besides our general intake line, we also are still available by email and a letter through the Postal Service at all three of our office locations. So really the only thing that's changed about our ability to be in contact is that our staff is all working remotely, so we are not able to take walk-ins or make any in-person appointments right now. Otherwise, all of the contact methods that you can find on our website for us are still good, and they'll still get you in touch with a staff person. That's great information. Thank you, Allison. Before we sign off, is there anything else you'd like our audience to know as we continually prepare for this ongoing pandemic? Yeah, you know, I think the, the message that I want to leave people with is that we know that here in New York State, things can be uh, a little bit scary or a little bit tense. There's a lot of different sources of information and things are changing daily. You know, we recognize that it's really important to be informed, but we want to really encourage everyone to take care of their mental and physical health while being as safe and informed as possible. We recognize that things like quarantine and isolation and social distancing can have really serious impacts on mental health. And so even though you might feel like you don't want to add to the burden of what medical professionals are doing, it's really, really important to reach out to your treatment providers or to reach out to your network, whoever that may be, if you feel like you're in need of some extra help during this time, whether that's mental health assistance, whether that's concern about some sort of discrimination issue. There's also really great options that are being developed and in place now for telehealth and different therapy services through video calls. And so we really encourage anyone who might need it to use those resources as well. And then I also want to encourage anyone listening to not worry about calling us on an issue if they're unsure if it's a DRNY issue. We're constantly having to adapt and adjust and we want to make sure that nothing is overlooked. So if you have a question, it's better to call us than to not call us because, like I said, we're constantly working with these other agencies to make sure that we can provide referrals, even if it's not something we do. But we want to know what's happening. Since we're not at the offices, since we're not meeting with you in person, there is a little bit that gets lost. We know this is a confusing time for a lot of people, and I think the message that we want to give here at DRNY is that We're sending our best wishes and we're still as ready to help as ever. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions or if you need assistance as this ongoing pandemic continues. Allison, thank you so much for your time and we look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you for having me. Empire State of Rights closed captioned has been brought to you by Disability Rights New York, your source for disability rights and advocacy. If you enjoyed our program, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this post. If there is a subject you would like us to discuss, please email podcast at drny.org or comment below. Tune in next Wednesday, where we'll bring you more information on disability rights in the state of New York. The closed captioned version of this podcast is available on our YouTube channel. To listen to more Empire State of Rights closed captioned, follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.